I was actually given the offer uh, halfway through my second interview. Um, <laughs> he said, oh, we're delighted to hand you an offer. And I was like, what? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Congratulations again, right? You will be joining Bain and Company, um, and this is really, uh, I would say, a remarkable achievement these days. Uh, and I think many people out there are envying you. Um, so I guess this has been one of the highlights of your year, has it? For sure, for sure. Right? It's uh, it's great knowing in my final year in university, I've got a great company to begin and start my career from in uh, in Vienna, at Bain, and. I'm really looking forward to uh, starting uh, starting uh, consulting in in just under 10 months. Yeah, terrific. Um, so how did you actually learn about the fact that Bain is indeed uh, extending an offer, right? So, I mean, did they tell you right away after your final round interviews or did you have more waiting torture? I was uh, it's quite interesting. I was actually given the offer uh, halfway through my second interview. Um, <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, the interviewer said, oh, I can clearly see you can do the math, so we don't need to bother with the math for the rest of the case. So I'm delighted to give you an offer. And so I already knew I was going to get it on the same day, but it was uh, quite a surprise. It took me just a moment. I was he said, oh, we're delighted to hand you an offer. And I was like, what? <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, that's that's great, because uh, what this actually means is they had a fantastic impression uh, of you throughout the entire process, uh, right? So um, I think uh, in that case, it was just uh, the partner wanted to get to know you a little bit, see how you come across as a person, meeting you in person, right? Um, and uh, yeah, in terms of your problem solving abilities, in terms of uh, doing actual calculations, they didn't have any doubts. So this is, this is of course, great. <laughs> so um, now that I'm speaking about it, uh, how did you experience uh, the interview process uh, at Bain in total, right? If you reflect really on the different interviews that you had, the consultants you talked to, um, did it feel stressful at any point or was it completely laid back all the way through? So in the first round interview, I was interviewed by a couple of managers and then in the second, and that was online, and the second round was by partners in person. Mm -hmm. And the uh, second round interview we definitely felt actually after we got into the room quite laid back the partners were very open and welcoming and really wanted to enjoy having a conversation so the initial nerves um definitely uh, went out the window quite quickly but also with the first round of course it naturally in every interview you, you definitely start a bit nervous but i think they really do their best to make you feel uh comfortable but that's not to say uh they're not going to uh really drill deep in what they want to understand so you yeah. have to still be prepared for difficult questions because at least that means if they have difficult questions for you they do really want to know you so yeah 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 but that's a good point that you're making because yes of course they they need to understand whether you have the capabilities whether uh, uh, you know you are you are showing the things that they need to see but on the other hand and this is one of the fears that i believe many people still have um what usually does not happen in these mbb interviews that you have the sort of bad cop interviews where they're putting, you know, pressure on you and where they're, you know, putting you into, into mental stress in order to test how you would respond in a real client client situation. This is something that is still floating around a lot of the inter, uh, on the Internet. And uh, what I can also confirm from uh, my time when I was an interviewer, it was actually part of the interviewer training. Uh, so all the interviewers were explicitly told this is not how we do things, <laughs> right? Uh, we want to know whether these people have the capabilities to do the job, but we will not find it out by just putting unnecessary pressure on them. Right? So um, very good that you're confirming this. Um, now, uh, maybe um, could we uh, talk a little bit about your entire journey of preparing for these interviews, right? So uh, maybe let's really uh, begin at the start. So uh, when you when you when you started uh, in the situation, okay, I need to prepare for my MBB interviews now. Um, what were the challenges that emerged for you, and what was the most important reason um, why you decided, okay, um, I want to receive professional coaching, and why did you feel that the MBB of a machine was the best option? For you so actually earlier in spring i had an interview again uh, for being uh, for a summer internship but it was with my exams and i had a couple weeks and i thought okay i need some coaching and i actually approached uh, the mbb offer machine and i said i have an interview in two weeks and they said okay we can't help you this is a this is a significant process um yeah. we can't do it in two weeks yeah. and so 
I tried a, a, another course, uh, which was definitely more framework based, which I mm. found, which we find future is not the right way to approach things. Mm. And I got to my interviews and they were just poor performances in the case studies. My key area lack, uh, key uh, areas of improvement were structure and um, driving the case forward. Mm. And so after this experience, while well, it didn't turn me off consulting, I realized, well, I really need uh, some, I need some coaching to really uh, develop uh, the right processes in mind because when you look at it in hindsight, it seems, oh, well, I could, uh, I could definitely create the structure and it makes sense, but actually creating it on the spot is more difficult than you imagine. And yes. when looking online for um, all these uh, coaching websites, I found that the MBB Offer Machine uh, really stood out to me as really quite a professional organization that was determined to ensure uh, your success in getting your offer. And they, it was really focused on that. There was no added extra uh, advertisement. They were just saying, we're going to tell you how we think and how your performance is it, how your performance is. The feedback will be brutal, but that's how you want it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, uh, good that you say this, but because this is this is indeed a warning that we usually give people uh, that it's, it's, it's really about, we need to be also efficient in what we're doing. We need to be very direct, right? Uh, but these things are never personal. It's always about making you successful because uh, uh, you experienced it, right? And this is also the case with every other mentee. When we work with somebody, we are also investing into that person, right? And uh, we need to make sure that we are all coming out as winners of this, of this collaboration, right? Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, so um, if we speak a little bit more about um, a content, right, uh, let's dive into uh, how we then prepared uh, to get you off already. Um, because um, uh, contrary to yeah, uh, the mainstream case books, which are available in the market, uh, which are centered around frameworks, you already mentioned this a little bit, um, we have established really a very robust methodical grounding on which you can then build a much stronger and more rigorous case solving muscle. So if you reflect back, right, what would you say? How has this more mature approach to cases and the independence from these frame frameworks helped you to be ultimately successful in your interviews with Bain? So I think you could tie this to a couple of reasons. Firstly, I, the Bain, uh, uh, the interviewers at Bain almost certainly hear frameworks every single every single interview. So if they just hear another generic framework, I want to look at profitability, competitors, blah blah blah. Yeah, they're just going to be bored even if it, to begin with. So they want to see, still see some, they want to see uh, something different. And with the logic, it provides a clear demonstration that you have full understanding of what actually is um, going on in the, um, in the case rather than yep. just some uh, generic points that could be useful. And this demonstration of logic really shows that you can have the uh, good problem solving skills, but the problem solving skills are repeatable across multiple different cases, because that I think is a key aspect they're looking for, because you can always be a one hit wonder, <laughs> but that's not what they want. The other yes. Yes, yes. And this is super important. And when you say uh, um, you need to show that you have a good understanding of what's going on, what is super important to stress is this is not related to knowledge, right? You do not want to, under, uh, to to demonstrate that you're super knowledgeable. This is also a big misconception that many people have, right? Um, in fact, uh, your knowledge will not impress them at all, because what you need to, uh, to show is that you have a repeatable process by which you would always solve uh, the issue so, so that it is part of your process to also ask the critical questions and to uh, to 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 align with the interviewer on certain you know uh, definitions etc right and um, and uh, this is why i think it's very important what you what you just said this uh, thing of not sounding like the average candidate does not mean that you need to be more, more knowledgeable. It means that you have a repeatable process under your belt, which you can apply to essentially any question, even if it's completely unknown to you. Right? Cool. So, um, well, uh, what would you now say um, if uh, you speak to a candidate now or a prospective candidate who's just starting with his interview uh, preparation right now? What would be uh, your top one or two uh, tips for that person? I would say if I could put maybe one line, maybe it's slightly counterintuitive, but practice does not necessarily mean perfect. If you have a weak foundation, you can do all the case practices you want and you will not improve. You really, the first key point is you've got to lay 
the correct foundation. And that's what uh, the MBB off machine did. They ensured that you had a good foundation and then made sure you practice with people who had a similar foundation. And that really maximizes the effect of case practicing. But without this strong foundation, you can do 30, 50 cases and you won't you won't uh, you won't pass the first round of the interview. So <laughs> first thing first is to get the right foundation and then begin to do the case practice. It's not yeah. just the second aspect. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, this is so, so important um, because if you don't, as you said, if you don't have the, the right foundation, then additional practicing will just make you perfect, perfect in doing the wrong things. <laughs> All right. So cool. Uh, Edward, thanks a lot. Uh, very insightful. Um, congratulations again. Um, and uh, yeah, all the best. All the best. Thank you.